Hey YouTube, how's it going? You know who it is, it's your boy, Red Cell Gorilla. Now, I'm not going to go over a whole lot today. I am cleaning down here because unlike most weekends, I say most, it's not like I get a whole lot of rounds out during the weekends. I do try to make sure that I'm zeroing, uh, I say zeroing, make sure that I'm zeroed and, uh, you know, the weather's been kind of wonky. So I want to see like, hey, what am I hitting at whenever it's super humid? Hey, what am I hitting at? Which which doesn't really matter a whole lot, right? It doesn't it doesn't really pass the so what test uh, unless you're shooting out really really far. I don't really care about that. I was just kind of kind of fooling between uh, whether I'm doing a 25 meter zero or a 36 meter zero. Uh, right now that scope is straight up zeroed for 100 yards, and I wanted to see uh, what it looks like if I just zero it for. 36 and then am I still hitting on target? I, I still like the the hundred yard at the moment um, But I don't know I might go to the 36 and you know my point of aim is the little tick for 300 at 36 yards and then we'll see if a hundred yards matches up at the hundred yard point of aim point of impact, right? So that's that's kind of what I was checking out today, but I'm cleaning and I said, you know what? I talk a lot about repair parts and the repair parts that you guys probably want to have. And I got it. This is completely different because, you know, I do have an AR style barrel. But, uh, you know, we got this little gas piston thing, which is what I'm holding in my hand and using to point things out. I've got this little gas piston gun instead of having an AR platform. So you're not going to see a buffer tube at you know at the end of my lower or any of that notice there's there's no hole there's nothing for that there's there's no buffer too because i don't have a buffer uh but for you ar-15 guys if we start in the back i'm not necessarily going to say you should have a spare buffer right i don't think you need a spare buffer but there are probably spare parts that you need i've not actually ever seen a buffer fail i've never seen a buffer tube fail aside from one time and that was because it was falling at a higher speed evident an airplane and it broke you know at the back and that that's it right so it it, uh, it kind of split the buffer tube where the threads are at uh, at the lower receiver right that that's the only time i've seen one bust there uh most of the time they're they're relatively strong right so continuing with the theme of the lower well do i really need spare lower parts probably not i've not seen a disconnector in and of itself fail I have not seen the hammer in and of itself fail. I've never seen the trigger in and of itself fail. But what have I seen fail every now and again, right? Trigger spring, hammer spring. Now, is that something that I'm going to carry? Probably not. I've, I mean, like I said, I've been running this gun for, for 10 years now. It doesn't really have a high round count. I am not worried about that spring failing. Right? That's not that's not something that goes into my rucksack, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get into the heart of this thing. I do have the operating spring and guide rod inside my bolt carrier. Bolt carrier is a little bit different than most of you guys with your AR platforms and your AK platforms, right? This looks very similar to kind of like a scar, right? But it's not it's not the same. It's just a wee bit different. Right, my operating spring and guide rod is really thick, and I this has a similar spring to what I've seen in the 240 Bravos. Uh, it's a similar spring, obviously, it's not nearly as big, uh, but it's very similar. And I've not actually seen one of those springs fail, so I decided, you know what, I really don't need a spare operating spring and guide rod, right? But what did I want? I did want a spare firing pin spring. I'd love to have another spare firing pin just to have one laying around, but I have a spare firing pin spring because what is cool is when your weapons work, and if your weapons don't work, well, by golly, they're just not cool, right? So I do keep a few spares in this little teeny tiny bag in my field cleaning kit. My field cleaning kit, I, I will say, is enormous. Does it need to be that big? No, it doesn't need to be that big. It's just a pouch that I had laying around, right? It's this It's this little pouch right here that I'm going to start throwing a bunch of crap in. Uh, and it's, 
yeah, it's what I've had my, my field cleaning stuff in for uh, probably about two years now, which isn't very long, right? Well, that's what I keep all my stuff in. And it's not dirty because I don't throw it on the outside of my ruck, right? But I do keep it on the inside of it. It's not too bad, right? Okay, so continuing on with your bulk carrier group, uh, for me, I wanted that spare firing pin spring because that's one of those parts that you guys don't have in an ACR that is probably very important right it's not cool when your firearms don't work or don't work as intended that's just not cool right and we're all about looking cool and being cool the other thing that I have is the bolt I do not have a spare bolt yet I would probably get one as soon as I can now you a or guys these are a dime a dozen super easy to get you can get one for under a hundred dollars easily these are about three hundred dollars because they have to be custom made from somebody right for the acr and then this little pin is not common to the acr either and this is my firing pin retaining pin right so that's that's just crazy these are a couple of parts that probably should have been common to the ar platform because again whenever this was made as the magpul masada it was supposed to have a lot of parts that are common with the ar on purpose right because we're we're trying not to bog down the uh supply chain right of having to get a whole bunch of new parts and why would you this is supposed to have a very similar bolt to the ar and yeah it's it's pretty similar but it's not the exact same but what is the exact same is the extractor here so it has the same extractor as an ar right exact same extractor so what should i probably get i should probably grab an extractor now while i rarely ever see extractors themselves fail they do fail and they fail a lot more than the other parts that i have spares for so that's one of those things where i should probably grab a spare extractor pin extractor retaining pin an extractor spring it's a little bit different spring the spring is the same but it has a little o-ring that goes on it but that's one of those parts that i should probably have right another thing is the cam the bolt cam pin this bolt cam pin again not the same and it's not the same as any other firearm that is out there that's one of those bad things about using a uh, proprietary firearm is parts are hard to come by right if i had to do another do over yeah sure i would just go with a quality ar this is one of those things where you got to be careful whenever you're pulling it apart because it will shoot across the room on you but yeah all right cool all better right and now our our bolt cam pin and all that stuff all back together right so what is something else that I do have a spare of? I have a spare charging handle, which might seem kind of weird. I should probably grab a spare sled instead, right? The charging handle sled. There's nothing wrong with this charging handle. They come out real easy. There's not an issue with it. The only bad thing is if I don't have a charging handle, this weapon system is not going to easily come back, right? It's, it's not something that you're gonna be able to load and and have ready and prepared to go right uh so i do have a spare charging handle kind of just for that and that goes in my little spare parts bag again for my acr right because i want to have those repair parts on hand now i have two of these this is this is something that i am worried about not working i've got two spares of the tap it spring just because of the way that the metal is on the tappet spring, I was pretty worried about the tappet spring itself breaking. So this is the original tappet spring. Then I have two spares for that tappet spring uh, because guess what? It's not gonna cycle if that spring is broken, right? So for you AR guys, you don't have anything like that unless it's a piston driven AR. You don't have anything like that in a direct gas pingement system because your your gases are just coming straight up into the gas tube hitting the gas key and it that's what is making your bolt carrier reciprocate right so you don't really need that kind of thing but i do and i'm not i'm not going to put this all back together for you 
Something that I probably need is some spare parts that go inside of this. This is my adjustable gas plug for the gas block. All right, so I've got my, got my gas block here. Let me bring this back out. Got my little gas block here, got an adjustable plug. And while I might not necessarily need anything for this, having a little uh, spare little spring for this detent here, that would probably be smart, right? Just if I could. Now, I don't feel like I need another tap it in and of itself. Uh, obviously, I haven't had an issue with this. I don't really have a very high round count, to be honest. Uh, but this isn't something that I'm necessarily worried about. It is built pretty solid. It's a little bit thinner, and I can't make it bend doing this with my fingers. I'm not I'm not going to try bending it and wrenching it, right? Uh, it's a little bit thinner than an FAL tap it, which is kind of what it's designed off of, right? This is, this is kind of designed off the FAL tab, but, uh, or kind of taken from that design. And that's fine, you know, it works. I do love that it is technically self-cleaning, so this does ream on the inside of the uh, gas block itself. This does have a little reamer that cuts fouling, which is pretty awesome. Then anything that's extra just comes out here. You can tell because of how dirty it is underneath of this. All that black isn't just, it's not just a little bit of shadow. This is where most of my carbon fouling goes, right? If I, if I scrape that, holy smokes. That's where it gets dirty, but that doesn't affect anything that the weapons platform does in and of itself, right? It doesn't do anything to the firearm. So unless this gets a ton, a ton of mud up in here, it's going to continue to work. And that is something that I was very serious about is, hey, is this thing going to work? Now, whenever I bought this, I had dreams of instead of camouflaging this, anodizing this thing electric blue and putting it to work in uh, competitions. And I got a Surefire muzzle brake instead of getting the Surefire three prong flash hider, right? Which is what I wanted. And it, it came along with, uh, you know, I got this because I wanted it, right? But for combat stuff, it's not a very good muzzle device. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic brake. It looks like a howitzer goes off in your hand just because of the extra powder that's in here. Now this is a, a 16 in one full barrel length, right? That's pinned and welded. And I had this lightened up just a little bit because again, at the time I was shooting competition, nothing really big, you know, nothing, nothing super cool. It's not like I was getting paid for it. Uh, but the, that was just something that I wanted to do and I still wanted to be somewhat semi-fast, right? Well, the barrel is not as heavy a barrel as I would like for combat stuff. I definitely want that thicker barrel. And this got lightened up just at the tail end, but it also probably needs to be a little bit thicker, right? You want a cold hammer forge barrel with crow molly lining. That is going to be that silver lining. That's the lining that's on the inside of the uh, M4 that's going through the army right now, right? You want a chromoly barrel. That is just, that's not this, right? This is, this is one of the reasons why I highly dislike Bushmaster in and of itself as a company, right? I love the ACR, but the ACR was not designed by Bushmaster. It was designed by, you know, the Magpul team at the time. I really wanted to get that that uh, Magpul Masada whenever I came back from Afghanistan. And then, uh, you know, whenever I ended up getting it, it wasn't the Magpul Masada anymore. It became the Bushmaster ACR, and I thought it was going to be this super fantastic thing, and I, I haven't had any trouble out of it, right? I did have some trouble out of the trigger pack, and then after uh, sending it back in to, you know, uh, I think it was their manufacturing or... Um, Man, I can't remember what it was. Product testing, gunsmith, whatever. Came back and I haven't had any trouble since. And that trouble was like immediate, right? That was immediate trouble. I went out to shoot it and, you know, under under 500 rounds, this thing was failing at the trigger pack. It wasn't failing anywhere else. Everything else was working just fine. Uh, you know, the heart of the gun was working just fine. The, the bolt 
carrier and bolt, all that stuff was working just fine. Sent it in, they repaired it for free, and then ever since, the trigger pack has been fixed. No issues. I haven't had a single issue out of it since. Uh, even with bad mags, it, it'll eat any kind of ammunition, which is, you know, what I was making sure that, is it gonna eat everything that I throw at it? I've shot steel case out of it. I've shot anything that's nasty and dirty out of it. I've done 55 all the way up to 77. I haven't done anything heavier than 77 grain out of this, but 77 is, is kind of my choice out of this barrel, because this barrel is a, a one in nine twist. That's not what I'm looking for. I want a one in seven twist barrel, but again, I'm gonna have to get a custom barrel to replace this. This is a very old, low, uh, low number, low serial number, right? This is one of the, one of the first 500, let's say that. It's one of the first 500 that they produced. Um, and you know that's cool that's awesome I, I don't really care about that i wanted something that worked and if i use it in the house or if i use it while i'm hunting or if i use it for target shooting yada 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 it needs to work right so how do you find out where is your firearm failing when you're going through well i just use the cycles of operation which are now i do believe the eight cycles of function and i guess i'll just post them up here but the eight cycles of function are feeding if you're having an issue feeding it's probably your source of feed right it means it's probably your magazine but feeding is when let's see if i have a let's do a laser this is a nine millimeter laser but uh coolio trick is nine millimeter is the same diameter in the back if i can get this in here same diameter in the back as 556 right so that fits right in there real easy so feeding what we're doing is your bolt carrier group, or your bolt actually, is stripping out of that magazine that round, and then it's gonna get chambered. So you got feeding and then chambering, and chambering is, if it's not chambering correctly, right, you're gonna get a lot of stoppages as that round is trying to climb into the chamber. So feeding is stripping it off that magazine. Uh, chambering is going to be this thing trying to get into the chamber and pushing in all the way. And then what you're going to have is locking. So as you can tell, this is gonna go into my star chamber, right? Let's pretend my, my star chamber is over here. As it goes into the star chamber, it's actually gonna hit the front of that chamber and it's going to twist. That's what that cam pin is there for. And all it's doing is locking those lugs, the bolt lugs, into that star chamber so it's gonna get enough pressure, right? So we have locking, then we're gonna have firing. Once this is pushed in, you can actually, oh, you can actually see the firing pin coming through. So the hammer drops, hits that firing pin, and once it hits that firing pin, boop, it's gonna come out and, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys love that noise. It's gonna come out and it's gonna hit the primer on that round, right? So fake primer over here. It's gonna hit the primer for your cartridge and that's gonna set off your little chain reaction that sends your projectile down range. Okay, so let's say projectile gets about here. Here's where my gas block is. That gas is coming in we hit firing. The gas is coming up. What it's doing is getting trapped between this little gas plug, uh, the gas block plug right here, and it's gonna hit that tappet, sending my tappet back. Now for you DGI guys, it's just gas coming up and going back into your gas key for you AK guys. I know that you have your long form, right? So this this whole thing is all connected, right? So you have that gas bell on top instead. Well, yours is expanding here and that's what's sending the AK's uh, action back, right? For me, it's very similar. It's going to come up. This is gonna come back just a little bit and with enough force to hit right here. You can see that silver. Uh, area that gets kicked back on my bolt carrier and for you AR guys it's going to be gas going into the gas key and sending your your bolt carrier group back right so you fired it's coming up so the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to unlock right we're unlocking we're extracting with our extractor and then ejecting with our ejector pin right and that's what's sending that round out. Extracting, ejecting, and recocking, right? I don't wanna say that's all eight, don't quote me on it, because I'm not paying attention really 
really too bad. So because of those eight cycles of function, we know which repair parts we need. If we are not feeding correctly, then either one of these lugs is probably busted or more than likely it's your magazine. It's your source of feed, right? If it's not stripping out right, your source of feed is probably all donged up. That's why I get uh, the Magpul mags whenever I actually buy anything. If I buy it myself, I will get the Magpul mags. If it is not Magpul, it's not something that I bought. I got it for free as a gift or somebody got whatever. I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I don't care. Magazines are magazines and they're quite expensive. So I'm not going to make fun of somebody who's like, hey, you know what? I spent $15 instead of the $18 and, and got you a GI mag. I don't really care. I throw the anti-tilt followers in them myself because I can just print them off and, uh, you know, do all that stuff. So source of feed. If it's not feeding right, it's probably your magazine. Chambering. If it's not chambering right, this is not something that I can really show you just because of the camera angle, but in the AR platforms and in this platform as well, there are these little feed ramps. There's two of them. Maybe I can show you. I'm not sure if you guys can even see. No, you can't see that at all. All right. Uh, anyway, there are two little feed ramps in there. Anyway, so I've got two little feed ramps, and if it's not feeding right, one of those feed ramps, it is either not put, the barrel is probably not the correct barrel type, because you have the carbine barrel types in the old, uh, the old AR barrel types where the feed ramps come all the way down, and then some of the, uh, the barrel block, or what you would call the trunnion on your, uh, on your AK, and for me, we, we have our, our own different version for the, the ACR, right? So that, that trunnion there actually has a milled out portion to where the barrel meets in and the feed ramps extend into that trunnion, right? So some of them are not like that. Some of them, it's a block and then you have your feed ramps. Well, if you don't have the right type of barrel or you don't have the right type of feed ramp, in there then sometimes it'll get stuck so feeding if it's not feeding could also just mean that there's already around in the chamber right sometimes that happens with your double feeds and that kind of thing so if that is happening then you know it's happening at the feeding at chambering if it's not going all the way in right that's that's part of that issue and i'm sorry i said feeding right so so that's that that's the chambering issue if you've got a double feed or, or whatever uh, and there's not enough space for it, or you're just having an issue with those feed ramps, then you're having an issue at chambering. Now firing, if it's not firing, could be the hammer, probably not gonna be the hammer, could be your firing pin, right? But something is happening to keep that primer from going off. Most of the time, it's probably going to be your ammunition, so get ammunition, get good ammunition, get okay ammunition, whatever, whatever your little pig likes to eat, go ahead and give it so it can oink, right? Okay, and then your feeding, what did I say? Oh, I said firing before locking. Woo! So locking. If you have a spring like I do, I've got a I've got a little spring. So I have positive pressure here. That firing pin spring that I showed you guys, that's what's pushing this bolt. And you're not going to have that on an AR platform. So if it is not locking, it's due to something else. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is because I don't know. I'm not I'm not familiar enough with it anymore to to know what it is. It's probably dirty. AR platforms are just they're disgusting in my mind. They get really gross. You won't have that that positive pressure, but in an AR, that's not how it works. You flip it down and see if it's coming out or not. All right. Sorry guys, I had to leave. So let's get rid of that. We got done with locking, we went into firing. So after it's fired, and, and if it's not firing, then perhaps your, let's see which one of these, because I don't even know which one's stronger. Yep, this one, sorry. Perhaps your hammer spring is too weak, right? Just depends on, on how much you're going through. And uh, your trigger spring is probably not the cause of it. Not really that worried about it, but uh, you know, maybe your hammer spring is too weak and it's not uh, not pushing the firing pin far enough. 
Maybe you're not getting enough firing pin protrusion. So that's why I say, especially for you AR-15 guys, it's easy for you to get a, a whole brand new firing pin, right? Not not a, a crazy thing to just be like, okay, you know, not, not super difficult to go grab a brand new firing pin. So just have one in your little spare parts kit. Right. All right. So after that, you're going to have unlocking. Now, usually you don't have a problem with unlocking for the AR platform, right? It'll be your, your gas rings. So you're not getting enough gas through there. So the gas and the gas key coming down and getting stuck on those gas rings and expanding inside your bolt carrier to push your, uh, to push your bolt forward and rotate it on that cam pen. Well, that's probably the issue on the, on, on those AR platforms, right? For the uh, for the AK, that's one of those things where it's, it's kind of difficult. They, they don't really have enough parts for it to do that. So if it's not doing that, it's probably your cam pin. You're not rotating in order to uh, unlock, right? And then for me, it would be that firing pin spring, which actually pushes my bolt forward. Right, that would that would be part of that issue, but even in that, even if that's not there, right, that little firing pin spring, if that's not there, I will still probably get unlocking just because of the force that is hitting, uh, that is hitting the, the carrier from my tappet. Probably still gonna unlock just because as it's coming back, this would be locked into the chamber it's coming back, that cam is rotating it to unlock it anyway. But yeah, so if it's not unlocking, it, it might be one of those issues. Now, extracting. If you're not getting extraction, it is probably going to be because of your extractor, right? And the extractor is one of those things where on the bolts of the AK, the AR, and the ACR here, right? Mine's very similar, it is the exact same piece as an AR, as far as I understand, I'm pretty sure this is one of the only pieces that they kept that had the commonality of the AR platform. So it has an AR extractor. And for you AK guys, if your extractor is broken or the spring is broken, meaning that we're not getting that, that positive pressure, right, to be around the, the rim of our cartridge case, if it's not grabbing onto it or it's broken, which I have seen those shear uh, very rarely, but they do shear right here. They will sometimes break. That little lip will come all the way off. Uh, sometimes that happens. Very, very rare. I don't see it happen very, very often, but it's one of those pieces where it's like, hey, look, you know, especially if I have to do a field repair and we gotta, we gotta leave, make our little tactical retreat, and now I gotta fix something. I have, to, where did that weapon system fail? And okay, it's all right. It's not a big deal. I can either get a common part from an AR uh, from somebody who happens to have a spare bolt, or I can just carry a spare uh, extractor and extractor spraying myself, right? And that's something that I don't have, but definitely need to, right? Okay, cool. So we've gone into unlocking and we've gone into extracting. Now, injecting. Injecting is pretty easy on the AK, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've handled one. Uh, but on the AK, on the inside of your receiver, there's a little protrusion. Kind of looks like a weird thumb, if I remember right. That's kind of right in your receiver on the left side. And what ends up happening is your extractor is pulling your round out and it just ends up hitting that uh, ejector, right? And that flings your cartridge case out. In the AR platforms and in a lot of the other like Western, Western uh, block nations, we have these ejector pens, right? In AR-10s, some of them have two of these ejector pens, but that ejector pen is under spring tension. There we go, that little click. That ejector pen's under spring tension, and that's what's forcibly pushing your cartridge case out of your weapon system so you can start feeding again, right? And I, I know we haven't gotten into recocking yet, but we will, uh, or, or cocking, cocking, recocking, I don't really care. Uh, but if you are having issues with it, it's obviously being extracted. It's getting pulled out of that chamber, right? Where it's inside the chamber. It's obviously being extracted, but it's just sitting there. It's not flying out of your ejection port like it should. Then it's probably your 
ejector pin on the Western Nation firearm systems, right? I think there's uh, two two companies that make them where you have two ejector pins. This is obviously not one of them. I think one of the bolt carrier groups with the bolt that has two, I want to say is the Tavor series of uh, firearms and your AR-10 platforms and, and uh, there, there's a couple other platforms. I don't really care about that. It's just that if you are not ejecting, that's probably what it is. That's probably the case. Let me, actually in the AK realm, here, in the AK realm of things, here's the ejector on a Glock, right? So this is very similar. Let's say that my hand is the rest of the receiver on your AK platforms. This is just a piece that's welded or riveted inside of the receiver, if I remember right, or it's milled in there as, as part of the process. Uh, that's if I remember that right. There's a, there's a few other weapon systems that do that, some HK weapon systems that do that as well. So that'll be very easy to tell, oh, hey, these rounds aren't coming out because this piece is completely broken off. Right, not something that's super easy to repair or feel repair. Okay, went through just about everything else aside from recocking. The only thing that happens during recocking is uh, I do believe in all cases, whether it's AKA or, or you know the ACR here, it is the bolt carrier that ends up pushing the hammer back and the hammer ends up locking on that disconnector. Right, uh, ends up getting locked on the disconnector, and then for the ACR. The disconnector kind of just holds that hammer in place just for a second before it releases, and then the sear surface on the hammer gets caught on the, uh, it's like a trigger sear, because it's not an actual sear, right? It's it's kind of a weird design if you look at other firearms, so it's not a sear in and of itself, it's just a sear surface. Uh, and we're, we're not talking about the auto safety sear in the back or, or any of that stuff, just because, you know, I don't have any of those things. Right, so so that's it. That That's it for the repair parts. If it's failing somewhere, it's going to be failing at one of those eight cycles of function. So now you know that, oh, hey, if it's not doing, you know, this thing, if it's not feeding, well, we know it. we need a repair part, you know, here in these, you know, one of three locations, right? Uh, that's, that's it, right? Okay, cool. I think I've... Uh, been retarded for long enough, so in transmission.